Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Ford, featuring available Sync with My Ford Touch. Sync with My Ford Touch gets you to your destination with integrated turn-by-turn directions and directional arrows displayed on screen. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and at Ford.com slash technology. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, Android device, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to All About Android, episode 36, recorded on Monday, November 28th. This is your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And Jason, what were you doing? Jason was... He was... Break it over yeah, there, but I can't all, really do I was it. trying not to break focus. No, the moment, yeah, when you did the the head moment move, I just... start, I'm just like, and then I see Ron go. <laughs> That's the new game now. I was trying to get Eileen to laugh during the open. Oh, right. That's a... Well, no, you know what happens usually is that you and I get distracted somehow during Jason's review or app review, and then we're always snickering like little kids. What it boils down to is I'm, and I feel I... so bad because Jason's doing a really good job <laughs> reviewing stuff, and we're just like. <laughs> What it falls down to something is, completely That's true. That is different. happening more than one occasion. The case. factor yes. in both those situations is me. Unfortunately, it I'm really the bad is. influence. Yeah, I'm it sorry. is. Yeah, see? So you show me something or you're like, point out chat, and I'm like, oh, ha, ha, ha. And Jason's like, so. And I can, and only, I can only like does. pretend that it's not happening right. for so long before I feel like I have to go, okay, really? What, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I know. And then I have to just turn my head and I feel so bad. Sorry. But, um, that's okay. okay. Well, that's us. <laughs> we are back with a ton, a ton of Galaxy Nexus news, uh, although not it's the news that you really want to hear, at least maybe. those of us here in the U.S. It's maybe. It's like kind of, sort of. All about Galaxy Nexus this week. It's so, all so, so about the Galaxy yeah, Nexus yeah. this week. Exactly. Yeah. Plus, I've got a review of the Nook tablet. We've got ICS on a tablet to talk about. Mm -hmm. And in the, grab, uh, in the arena, it's another grab bag. I don't know who's going to win. It almost seems like they're just all grab bags now. I mean, what? Well, I like, the, more I do like the theme every now and then, though. Yeah. We did tablets. Well, actually, that was last week. But the, the idea of doing tablets was fun. We should although... do like a 99 cent sale. Yeah, kind that's of like, a good idea. You know, yeah. Best apps for okay, 99 that's, cents. That's just set up a little, 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 little different. I like that. Uh, How about for next week? Oh, I'm not here yeah. next week. <laughs> oh. Bummer. Uh, well, whatever. Take my idea and run with it. I should. That's sure. a great idea. We're going to go well, ahead and yeah. do it. We're going to do it. See you in a couple of weeks. We'll totally give you credit for it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, All whatever. Right. Uh, you know what? Let's just uh, let's get into our Let's news. Mosey. So you know how I said there was a lot of Galaxy Nexus news? Well, literally, this next block is all Galaxy Nexus, Galaxy Nexus. So there are unlocked orders going on right now uh, with still no official release date here in the United States. But those unlocked orders are sold out. I believe Leo ordered from uh, Expansis here. I don't know if you can pull the screen up, uh, Chad. But it's going for $749.99 for the unlocked that's, phone. That's just insane. Uh, and I believe it's sold out. Well, let's see. Yes. Uh, the update from the 25th update. Due to overwhelming demand, we sold out of our first batch of Galaxy Nexus within 16 hours. Stick with us and we're still taking orders and we'll have more to stock. Uh, to ship next week. So I don't know if Leo actually ordered it or if he's in the waiting list. We'll, we'll soon find out um, because, uh, yeah, we, I'm not quite, he's not quite sure if, he, if he's actually getting it. I hope he it. does. I want one in-house. I want one in my hands. I know. I just want to play with it a little bit. So, <laughs> sounds so weird. Damn it. Um, I, I, mean, I, I knew you were going to do I know. I just the can't. Second I'm sorry. Second I just can't. Happened. I'm sorry. I'm 12, <laughs> apparently. But um, <laughs> the, uh, the that price tag, I mean, I know it's unlocked, I, and... And I'm, I'm planning, and I, a couple like a couple weeks ago, I said, "That's it. I'm on board. I'm totally going to get it." Mm -hmm. Seven fifty is pricey. That's, yeah. that's big for my pocketbook. I mean, yeah, I, that's I could, that's actually two hundred more than this. Yeah, I mean, I could ju mm. I could justify four ninety five, five ninety nine if I had to. I can mm -hmm. I can skim, you know. But it's the holiday. Seven fifty is just ouch. I know. It's, it know, does hurt. Yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Mm. Well, and apparently the rumor sources uh, now that uh, the the rumor is on Verizon that the Galaxy Nexus LTE release date is December eighth, with pre orders going tomorrow, Tuesday, November. November 29th, we're recording this on Monday. 
Um, I hope that's true. So Yeah, multiple Verizon sources are apparently kind of giving up the same date, um, and it's kind of being reported all over. And I, A couple of weeks ago, I kind of got fed up because there have been so many dates thrown mm -hmm. around of, oh, well, it might be this. Oh, it's going to be this. And I actually put it out, I think, on Google Plus or Twitter, just like, all right, I'm done paying attention until it's actually confirmed. Yeah. Of course, I, I kind of went back a little bit here, but... It, these these are coming from multiple Verizon sor uh, wireless sources, yeah. so we only really have a, a day to wait to see yeah, if and pre order yeah, start tomorrow. To yeah. By the time you listen to this so. episode, maybe you You'll are probably uh, ordering it online. This will be old news. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like I used to be a, a loyal Verizon uh, user, and then I switched to T-Mobile to get the G1. Mm. And now, like, maybe I should go back to Verizon. Like, it's, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, although I don't want to leave T-Mobile in their hour of need as they're not getting They bought. might need you. Yeah, as they're not yeah. getting, yeah, as that deal's yeah. dead. Yeah, that deal's yeah. kind of falling through. Oh, poor oh, T-Mobile. That deal's dead, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like, there's, you know, AT&T and T-Mobile, yeah. not happening. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, uh, we didn't report this last week, but there was a big volume bug with the Galaxy Nexus phones out in the UK. Uh, apparently, there is a fix out now. There's a, a ROM that you can download. We'll have a link on our website. Um, and I... <laughs> How much should we really uh, tell about the the bug? Well, I mean, I mean, it affected a lot of a lot of these devices, and it was kind of a, a big question to you know to see whether this was going to spill over into the mm -hmm. devices that make it to the U.S. Obviously, um, and it was kind of a big deal. I mean, if you got it within proximity of I think Some other other uh, types of wireless kind of antenna yeah. activity, it would start to suddenly throw your volume all the way down to zero, and, and there was really nothing that you could do to bypass it. So if you're in the middle of a call, suddenly you wouldn't hear them. Yeah. The other awesome. person on the other end, the that's other person a, would hear you. That's so that's bizarre. What they, that's what they call a feature, actually. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, Don't want to hear you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my phone. I'm so sorry. It's not working. But I saw a video of it completely rocking, the volume going back and forth and stuttering. Yeah, I mean, um, it's certainly not a not a feature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it does sound like they're, they're close on a fix, and like you said, there is a... Uh, kind of a, a ROM update that you can download and install um, that can kind of bypass it in the yeah. meantime. Now, um, you Google Plus this uh, info about the Galaxy Nexus that uh, Google says there's not going to be USB mass storage. And I, I read through your thread, everybody complaining or saying, eh, not a big deal. You can do it this yeah. way, that way. How? What are your feelings today about not having USB mass storage on the Galaxy Nexus? Well, so, so here's the difference. Basically, on a phone like the phone I've been using for the past, I think it's probably close to 30 days now, uh, <laughs> the HTC Rhyme, or pretty much any other phone that I've really used for the most part has, you know, removable SD card. Actually, mm -hmm. the Nexus S does not, right? Uh, no, I no, it does. Or does it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Nexus S does. Um, so if you have that removable SD card, then essentially uh, it allows you to mount that SD card as uh, UMS, USB mass storage, and it shows up on your computer yep. as an external drive. So it makes it very easy to drag files onto that storage by just plugging it in through USB. Um, the Galaxy Nexus does not. The Galaxy Nexus has a single internal storage has no removable SD right. and it's not it's unpartitioned so basically that 32 gigs or however much the storage is going to be inside the Galaxy Nexus is all for app installs it's all for the media that you that you move on to it it's called uh, MTV media transfer protocol MTP sorry um, Windows from what I understand uh, Windows Explorer has native MTP support so you can kind of mount it almost like a drive and, and move things on as you would as you would hope to. Uh, Mac, Linux, it's a, it's a different story. You you need an app essentially running on the Mac, for instance, that allows you to then move things into it. It's not a drive that mounts. Right, but so what's the, how is that the end of it? So the, how I'm looking towards this, I have two thoughts about this. Is one, I loved that I could mount the, when I got the G1 originally, yeah. the Nexus 1, now that I've got the, whatever this is, the, the Nexus, I don't know which one do Nexus I have? S. Nexus S. Nexus <laughs> S. It's like, hey, you track these Nexus names. I love that I can mount it and move stuff over. <laughs> the times that I do it on my phone itself, maybe a handful over the yeah. past year. I use it maybe to pull stuff off, like to back up a phone before I'm going to switch over, stuff like that. The Motorola Zoom tablet uh, doesn't mount. It uses an app. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm on OS X, mm -hmm. and you, as soon as I plug it in, this little Android app loads up, and I get like an Explorer thing. It works fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I guess yeah. If, it, if it works fine. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the question. I'm so used, be, I, I guess... Yeah. The reason it kind of it kind of put me off a little bit is because I'm so used to plugging it in as a drive when I'm doing things like loading, you know, ROMs mm -hmm. onto my phone or whatever. I find within the whole rooting and yes. ROMing world, it's something that I right do there. all the time. That's ex that's yeah. exactly it. On the video stream, you're kind of seeing the function that you know would allow you to open it up as a USB drive. Uh, having said that, I mean, 
I, I think the reasons that they're going for this are kind of are kind of good actually. After some some uh, kind of thinking about this, actually, Dan Morrill of Google said on Reddit, he said, "We got tired of." Uh, let's see here, where is that? Ah, it just disappeared. There we go. We got tired of seeing OEMs include many gigs of internal storage for music while users were still running out of space yep. for apps and data. <laughs> this approach lets us merge everything on one big volume, uh, which is way better. If, uh, if a given device has a removable SD, SD card, it will support USB mass storage. If it only has one built-in storage, with built-in storage, it will only be MTP and PTP. Yeah, I don't I think, think it's, it's fine. I think it's fine. I, you know, coming from the iPhone world where we didn't have USB mass mm -hmm. storage, um, and then coming to Android where I couldn't download apps because I was running out of space, that... Mm -hmm pissed me off yeah, that, and, and so I'm especially when this, you've got like, space elsewhere you and you're space, like but it's there you know just and tap into I, it. I may be downloading more than the average person but it you know yeah. i just like knowing it's all there there's no partitions it's all there and oh, yeah. but it is kind, i do not like not having the choice to be able to do the usb mass storage but mm -hmm. I, again like you i don't think i use it that much i don't think you use With that Dropbox, much and, and then the I've, app you know isn't, moving stuff and the app isn't that intrusive at all and it's mm -hmm. so what happens when you plug in the galaxy tab Oh yeah, no. That's that's been an issue for me too. I yeah. can't move any media onto the Galaxy Tab. It does. The, it does. Do the Mac the does not recognize it, it as a drive. Can, I, can you hand it to me? Can I see what happens when I plug it? Yeah, in? sure. Yeah. Sure. Here we go. I think if it's just a matter of installing an app. Well, no, it's but not... you won't be able to oh. because it's a proprietary oh, right. plug in the bottom. <laughs> Ah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. recognize it, and so yeah. you could move things yeah. over with Dropbox. You can move things over with other yeah, apps. Yeah, and, that's, and that actually, if you, if you take a look at the Google Plus uh, thread, there's a lot of kind of different solutions that people yeah. came up with. There's it was actually going to be works around. Works yeah, around. yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. Dropbox is definitely a way. Sometimes, though, I just want to plug my device directly into my computer and get yeah. that fast transfer because I just want to pop it in you know, yeah. mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah, that's um, true. And I'm just so used to doing that on my phone as USB storage. I think it's one of those kind of kinds of things that's like, oh, it's changed. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to yeah. reject it because it's changed. But probably in, in practice, it's not going to be that bad. And I understand why they're doing it. Yeah. I think it's actually a, a good reason why After they're the going After the show, I'll show that. you the app. It's not that hard to use. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to press a button? No, it, honestly, <gasps> it auto detects. As soon as I plug yeah. in the Zoom, it, okay. it, boots, it opens right up. It's, little, it's the little Android with the USB hand icon. Mm -hmm. And it's just, a, it's just a finder window. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's really... Really easy to use on OS X. Right. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I wonder, too, with the Galaxy Nexus, if you'll have um, Keys Air, K-I-E-S Air. Um, that is a, uh, a Wi-Fi enabled app, and you can drag and drop um, files. That's I've been using oh. that a lot, too, hmm. to connect. So you connect, you through, go into your browser, and through your browser. Files. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would imagine it's that would It's very, work, very yeah. easy to use. So I'm thinking they might put that in the Galaxy Nexus. I don't know, but yeah. we'll see. Uh, okay, also, uh, CyanogenMod Mod devs bring 4.0 to Samsung Nexus S and International Galaxy Nex or International Galaxy S as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they've boom. got a lot of stuff in the pipeline right now. Uh, Cyanogen Mod is, is totally, you have to, I mean, this is their next version, right? Cyanogen yeah. Mod 9. So, this is this is what they're working for, mm -hmm. uh, and they're kind of they're, they're, the it's a testament to them how mm -hmm. hard they work because they're able to get Cyanogen Mod on so many devices yeah. so quickly. I mean that did not take very long at all. So yeah. uh, looking forward to that. Cool. So the uh, the eternal debate between iOS and Android, or not debate, a little friendly competition, uh, got ratcheted up a little notch with the new Samsung Galaxy 2S uh, television ad. Did you see that, this that ad? Some, some people are are, call, are calling offensive, uh, while others are calling fair play. Offensive? Um, I, I don't know. know. Can we can we roll? Let's the video? roll the yeah, video, yeah. Chad. Let's, let's, let's you decide. Guys, I'm so amped I could stay here for three weeks. So there are a bunch of people lining up to get the iPhone in San Francisco, a bunch of hipsters. I think two people just left. Why would they be leaving when we're only nine hours away? Yeah, I mean, this is an event. Uh-oh. Blogs are saying the battery looks sketchy. It looks the same. How will people know I upgraded? 4G? Is it 4G? It doesn't say. Whoa. She got there. So he's looking at a girl across what is that? a bench, Guys, not in line, hey playing bro. with her phone. Can we see your phone? Uh, sure. Can I see it with my hands? Oh, have you seen this thing? <laughs> hey, bro. Check that out that cracks me. This thing is huge. It's pretty massive. And it's got 4G speed. It's magnificent. Uh, it's, a, it's the white Samsung? model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can I never get a Samsung. Incident. I'm creative. Dude, you're a barista. <laughs> Why do you actually get 4G phones? I just get a 4G phone. <laughs> yeah, it's a Galaxy S2. This phone is amazing. All right, the next big thing is if already here. That's Galaxy awesome. S2. If I hadn't 
hadn't already bought the unlocked phone, I probably would have gotten the white Samsung Galaxy S2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's Just a great ad. That's I love ad that be. ad, that, but yeah. I think that ad Offensive. is for us. I have to say, though, no, I'd agree Leo has played us. the the <laughs> app several times, and to yeah. uh, I and to and for iOS people. And most of them just kind of chuckle. They don't, yeah. you know, they don't think it's, you know, offensive. It's friendly competition. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's poking fun. It's like, come on, you can't not, whether you're an Apple fan or not, you can't scoff at the people waiting in line, the, the event status that's right. become. I mean, like I've been saying for years, what is it now? It's 20, what are we, 2011? Mm -hmm. This has been going on since, oh. Seven. Oh, five, oh, oh, six. It was before I moved to San Francisco because I remember I oh, ran. Oh, the yeah, iPods? Yeah, I remember when the there. iPad Nano came out and I ran to the mm -hmm. Apple Store to go buy one, mm -hmm. like the whole Steve Note and stuff like that. And yeah. It's just getting, I'm like, I'm exhausted. So <laughs> you, so it's it's a funny topic to poke fun at. And good job mm -hmm. on doing a creative ad. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love that ad. Yeah. And I was so excited to, I've seen it like a bill, gajillion times now. Um, and, it's just funny. Who cares? And a great point made in the chat room. You didn't hear PC people getting upset over the Apple PC ads. Exactly. I mean, like they, that's what Apple was doing the same thing years ago, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. I thought it was a, a very well done app. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and actually, just kind of to tie the Galaxy Nexus and the Samsung Galaxy S2 together, those two discussions together, I've seen a lot of, like, rumblings on online as I've been reading through about how people are so happy about the fact that they ended up going with the Galaxy S2 because a lot of the news that tends to come out before the Galaxy Nexus has actually made its official kind of mm. unveiling has some people being like, well, okay then, I made the right choice. Like yeah. this is actually, you know, maybe maybe the better choice for me. Um, you know, especially like one of the things that I read that through was for that USB mass storage. Oh, so if that's yeah. really important you to you, yeah. maybe that's uh, what you need to do. Um, and just a quick update here, uh, Google I.O. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we went to it this year. We had a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, did you? Did made you? Out, made out like a couple of bandits. Yeah, That's maybe right. next time, Ron. What do you think? Just what sit, do you think? Sitting at home. Do you have anything online. going on uh, June 27th through the 29th? Three total days? No, I don't. I'm free. Oh, okay. Well, see. You well, there might. You there you go. I, I hope that stays true. But Google I.O. has been extended to three days because they said uh, people just want more of it. They, they, they want to be able to attend more of the sessions and... Uh, I know. I would imagine maybe pushing it to a third day means Google has to come up with something a else. To get, away. Well, yeah. originally, um, we reported this a couple weeks ago. Originally, they had April dates, but they, in order to get that third day, I think they had to move it to a different time. Really? Yeah, oh, okay. probably because of Moscone scheduling. And, and oh, no, no, that, no. I know why. Because um, Moscone is under uh, massive construction next year. Oh, that's maybe why. that's why they had to move it, and then they went ahead and got a third day. There's a lot of construction going on in the Moscone area in San Francisco in the... February, March, April, May zone. That's why they moved okay. WonderCon down Anaheim. Oh. No, they yeah. did? Yeah, WonderCon's in Anaheim this year. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, Sad. okay. Well, anyways, I'm looking forward to that. I've got it marked on my calendar. 27, 28, 29, 28. It's Tom's birthday. Yeah, husband, saw that. But, oh, well. No, maybe he should go to Google I.O. and he'll get a nice gift. Yeah, oh, that's a good idea. I will go to Google I.O. for him and but I will share. But then you have to give him the gift. I'll share. It's oh, fine. Okay. That's We're good. married. That's it's good. fine. That's true. <laughs> share and share alike, right? That's right. All right, cool. So, uh, do a quick email? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right, so email comes in from Kevin from Orlando about one of my favorite topics. And he says, hey, AAA crew, uh, since Ron is a Google TV, mm -hmm. drink, I was hoping you might be able to help. I just purchased a Sony TV with Google TV built in for my partner in May that should be arriving soon. I know that you have to link a Google account with the device, but we're not sure if we should use one of our own individual accounts or make up a separate account to be used with the shared device. Is email accessible from Google TV? Or bookmarks sync between devices like on Chromebooks? It's a great question. And um, at this point... I don't have a clear answer for you. I would say I'm using my personal account. There is no email client on the Google TV natively, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't log into Gmail via your browser, things like that. But any of your personal information that you're worried about coming through, I haven't seen a portal for it to come through yet. I don't see a calendar. I don't see Gmail, that sort of thing. Who's to know if they're going to add that later on? Mm -hmm. you know, who knows? But as of right now, it doesn't seem like that. Um, bookmark syncing, I haven't noticed that either. It's While it's running Chrome, it's not a, a straight version of Chrome, like desktop version of Chrome. Right. It seems to be a Chrome-Android hybrid. 
that um, I imagine when we see Chrome on the on Android, we'll see a lot more similarities, and then maybe they roll out bookmark syncing. But as of right now, it's not there. Um, if you want to be safe, uh, better safe than sorry, set up another account and just operate it off that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm they're free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're free. free. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm running it off my personal account. I've got no qualms doing it. Um, I've bought apps on it. I've had no problems. I haven't seen yeah. any data eek into it or anything like that, but there could be something hidden somewhere that I haven't noticed mm -hmm. yet or anything like that. But, I um, suppose the lameness of setting up another account is if you happen to have uploaded a lot of music to like Google Music and your own individual accounts, you're probably going to have to do it again. Yep. Through the join account, which... Or, no, I'm pretty sure on the app you can identify what account to log into. And you can yeah, easily toggle to... Toggle, toggle between accounts, oh, that's yeah. Good. Oh, I see. I'm pretty no, sure. No, yeah, yeah, you're right. You can, you, you can, can do that. Yeah, on the app itself. Uh -huh. Yeah, totally. Good so, um, yeah, I don't know, try, but try it and see, you know? I mean, the great thing is you can undo it. Yeah, You can just delete true. the account and set up a new one. It doesn't, doesn't really change much, so... Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yay, Google, right. Google TV. It's a rising Woo! tide. I know. It's, we get a lot of emails act, about it, actually. So Yeah, I'm telling um, you. I'm thinking so people pitch, are going to have to drink a lot more, I'm apparently. thinking of pitching a new show. I think, you know, I think Google TV, <laughs> I think there's enough to keep us going. Is there? For GTV a with weekly Ron. weekly two-hour show. Or I just, really? <laughs> so I was watching okay. on Netflix the other night on my Google TV, just stories about using your Google TV. <laughs> <laughs> Magical and exciting. I spent so much time on my Google TV this holiday weekend. You have no idea. Really? <laughs> I love it. Wow. <laughs> we actually might graduate our Google TV out of the bedroom into the main room finally. Wow. Yeah. And it's a review, right? So you don't even, yeah, have, to, review. You don't even have the new software I'm, yet. Well, I'm going to wait for the new software before yeah. we do that. Yeah. By the way, I just need to, I'm sorry, everybody who has a Logitech review. I, I, if I had known Logitech would drag mm -hmm. their feet on it, I, I would have caveated all my evangelism. But I was on App Judgment last week and with Mauricio, I was going, mm -hmm. over, going over Google TV and there, all these people were screaming, I have a review I don't have it yet. And I just felt so bad. It, like, <sighs> I have yeah, the review. Yeah, sorry. that's rough. Tears. Yeah. I, like, I'm responsible. But you know what? Like, Tears. I've got anything well, right. involved that, in it. That's yeah. rough, but you know what? You paid $100. True. For it. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe not everyone. Pay more, so. We a lot of people, did not. We bought it. A lot of people it. paid $100 the... for it. Yeah. So you'll get it eventually. Yeah. It'll be worth it once you do. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick break. I'm, I'm probably going to get emails about that. <laughs> uh, and thank our sponsor, Ford, uh, featuring Sync with My Ford Touch. Sync is an in-car communications, entertainment, and connectivity system that's voice activated it helps you to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road one of the great features of sync is sync services this is uh, things like turn by turn directions tell you where you go uh, where you're going displays directional arrows on screen so that there's no question where you need to be turning up ahead uh, all without having to purchase an aftermarket or integrated navigation system sync services also includes business search there's 40 million businesses including telephone numbers business information directions all that stuff uh, integrated in a send to sync feature which uh, basically enables you to use google maps or mapquest from home to figure out your route and then zap it over to your car for when you get in it saves you a lot of time that way uh, and using voice commands in your in your vehicle to get turn by turn directions as i said before a free sync destinations app which is also available uh, in the uh, android market uh, gives you mobile access to manage your sync traffic directions information systems account all that stuff on the go uh, the ability to pre-save destinations to your account such as home or office which is actually something that I uh, always mean to do on my phone because a lot of times I have to navigate to my home from wherever I happen to be so it's a really handy feature uh, plus you get traffic updates and all that kind of stuff sent to your phone as well it's all designed to help you keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road that's Ford Sync with my Ford Touch it's available in the 2012 Ford Focus you can learn more about this and other technologies uh, Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology and we thank Ford for their support of All About Android. Thank you, Ford. Thank you. Yay. All right. Let's get into the hardware. All right. So this came up last week, and it was kind of exciting. The Asus EPad Transformer oh God, um, I want one. <laughs> is the first tablet to get an unofficial Android 4.0 port. Now, basically, that means that if you have the Transformer already and you want to be, you know, want to get ice cream sandwich on your tablet, and I imagine it's rooted at this point. And if not, you can go ahead and root it and throw this on there, and you can be one of the first kids on the block to have ice cream sandwich running on your tablet, which I, I will tell you I'm waiting. Every day I check to see if... The Galaxy uh, Tab 10.1 has any sort of an ice cream sandwich port yep. ready for it. I know that uh, Santa Jamada has actually announced that 
they have something that looks great, mm-hmm. uh, Kush said, but um, it isn't available yet. So, but that probably means it's right on, around the corner. That transformer, actually, that transformer just can't be stopped. Well, I actually, I meant that I want the prime. Not the one that's out, right? I want the one that's not out. The quad core, that's the one I yeah, want. Yeah, no, well, and that's and that's the next part here. The Transformer <laughs> Prime was actually shown off a little bit of its own uh, version of the ice Hot cream sandwich this? goodness. Yeah, I mean, it's a really nice-looking tablet. Okay, so is that got the video? And- uh, it looks like it was. The well, no. that's the thing. This this is the Nexus Prime. Uh, no, or sorry, the, like sorry, the, the Transformer here, Prime. This video that we're looking. No, it wasn't shot here. Does, I wish it like was. It, does, it? it kind of does, right? <laughs> it looks like it was on this table. Yeah, I know. That's why it just freaked me out. <laughs> yes. See the thumb ring? No, actually, <laughs> there is no thumb ring right there. Um, but I mean, it looks really good. And the more I see ice cream sandwich on a tablet, the more I really want it for myself yeah. um, to to play around with it. Um, the widgets cool. look a little different, yeah. although um, what I like is just uh, moving into folders. Is he going to do that right now? Oh, hello. Drop it in. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. you know, no big deal. No big nice. deal. It's just moving the apps uh, together to create a little folder super fast. Yeah. <laughs> Let's so, see here. <laughs> it looks pretty slick. Um, I don't know, man. The, that Transformer Prime is just a slick tablet. Mm-hmm. And it's the first device that I think I've actually seen a keyboard dock with, like, made for it, that I'm like, you know what? That, that's cool. That is That would really work for me. Like, the other ones, it's like, oh, yeah, that's great, but I don't know if I would get it because it looks strange or, mm-hmm. you know. But this one just, it looks slick. Like, it, it it's very compact, super thin. Just looks like it's, it w- would work really well with this tablet. Take Asus, who knew? Yeah. Hey, the, the people that have the transformer. Yeah, no. They, really, they yeah. For Everybody sure loves know. that. Yeah. Uh, also, a uh, possible release of December 8th on the Transformer Jeez. Prime, which is very soon. soon. And so just in time that, for the holidays. Yeah. That and possibly the Galaxy Nexus. That means that you are you basically are, uh, you, you can't wow. afford anything else for the rest of the <laughs> month. <laughs> <laughs> My whole family is not getting Christmas presents now. Because right. you know, I had to get the Aces no, Prime. No, you make them presents. It'll come from the heart. No, you thank them for giving you the Transformer Prime with the money that you saved right, from exactly. not giving them a gift. I'll send them the email <laughs> from the Prime. Yes. There we go. There there you I'll go. call them from my new phone for the Nexus, uh, for the Galaxy Nexus. Yeah, you'll call them a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it should just be noted real quick because it seems like I hear this more and more these days. Uh, the Transformer Prime source code is released before the device is even out. It seems like manufacturers are kind of getting it a little bit more. They're, they're releasing yeah. that source code out there and letting the developers kind of have their, have their fun. Yay. So, um, um, I like to see that and love to encourage it. So that's that. That's exciting. Well, to switch gears a little, let's talk about uh, some phones. It's hard to get excited about a phone that doesn't have ice cream sandwich. But if you're looking for a new phone, AT&T's got some details on the um, LG Nitro, which is coming out, uh, which is going to be running Android 2.3 Gingerbread. Um, it's also going to have a 4.5-inch True HD IPS display, um, 1.5 gigahertz dual-core processor, 1 gigabyte of RAM, 20 gig of storage c- capacity, 4 gig onboard memory with a 16 gig micro SD card, uh, 8 megapixel rear facing camera, uh, 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, LTE, LTE um, Wi Fi, all that stuff, all that great stuff. DL, DLNA, which is kind of cool, which mm-hmm. I haven't actually seen on a phone, maybe just because I haven't noticed, but. Um, so it's, it's a pretty pretty solid phone, and then once once it gets ice cream sandwich, then it'll be pretty badass. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Who's I mean, that it's, girl that's um, uh, pre- girl? prepping she is, uh, Who is girl? she? She's just a, LG girl. Oh, she's the LG Quote. girl? Yes. LG has a girl? Oh, this oh, girl? Oh, like T-Mobile has a girl? LG oh. has a girl? I just, well, I'm like, do I recognize her? She's an actress? I don't know. Yeah, she looks uh, kind of familiar. Maybe she's on a CW show. I have no idea. She's, um, got, <laughs> she's got a mouth. Jeez. Okay. Anyways, if you're not watching the video, sorry. I was just uh, curious as to who she was. It's this weird probably... to watch it with no audio. It's weird. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is probably AT&T's uh, best uh, LTE device yeah. right now. It's probably, hands yeah. hands probably right at the top there. So, yeah. um, so if you're on AT&T and you want one of their high-speed LTE phones, check yeah. this one out. There you go. Okay, well, I'm just going to give a short review of the Nook tablet. We looked at it, and we unboxed it last so week. You've had it for a week now. I've had it for a week now. Uh, I've made it, you know, I had to put away the fire that, that's here. You can see the difference here. Uh, I should probably just open up. So well, you, you, you middle you have a bulkier case for the Nook, or like it's yeah. a, more of like a portfolio than a case. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So anyways. 
Bless you, Burke. Okay, so um, I, as you can see, I already customized it. I put my dog on the on the cover of the oh look, there's an error oh. uh, of my wallpaper here. Now I've spent a little bit of time with it, and I have to say the hardware for this is fantastic. It's actually leagues better to me than the Kindle Fire. The only issue with this is the ecosystem and Barnes and Noble versus the Amazon ecosystem. So. I am admittedly an Amazon freak, so the Kindle Fire would make more sense for me, but I wish that, um, well, I, I'll save uh, my comments. I just wish that the, you know, the Barnes & Noble ecosystem was, was a lot heftier, I guess, in terms of buying. Because if you look in the App Store, I'm going to go in here, again, the widget pops up like we show, I mean, you know, shop all... There's not a lot going on here. Well, it's we, said that, we said that I know, last week. Though, I know, because... but I'm just saying it's not. It's yeah. it's it's kind of a big deal for me at least, um, and maybe it won't be for most because really what they're going to be looking at is probably the library and um, shopping for books and magazines and newspapers. The magazines, reading magazines on here. Oh my God, let's, let's read about the final days of Ashton and uh, Demi. Oh, uh, is fantastic. I love reading here. It's actually easier to subscribe to and do the free trials on Barnes & Noble than it is on Kindle because on Kindle, they ask you to sign in every single time you get, um, like, so if I go from Wired to Vanity Fair, I have to sign in. Here, I just hit a subscribe button. That's all I want to do. I, I'm already signed into the to the Nook uh, ecosystem. But I, I do like the experience on here. I'm finding, at least on, on my end, there's a little bit more uh, interactivity with some of these uh, uh, magazines than there is with... Um, the uh, the Amazon Kindle apps. Is that the Greg, Greg Gatsby cast? Yeah. Oh, huh. I'll just show you. So, for instance, this is the kind of interactivity that, that I like. And uh, I, admittedly, I have not... Um, I'll show you in a minute. Like, like here, we'll get a little bonus video of the sexiest man alive, Bradley Cooper. Remember we talked about him last week? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, I like that kind of stuff. Added, you know, uh, incentive to buy digitally. Uh, okay. But, anyway, so the experience I like quite a bit um, reading on... Um, magazines and subscribing books great uh i have no complaints about reading books either it's actually a smoother page turn to me and mm. some of the books have the actual page turn um that you know i kind of fall for i'm really i'm really lame like that like the animated page yeah, turn, yeah 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 here vanity fair has it's it interesting that people some magazine books do some, yeah. some don't some books i would imagine do, that would yeah. be see look at vanity fair like that but you know it just depends yeah you would think it'd be the app not necessarily yeah. the publisher or the or the book uh but. not so i can yeah it's with the with they, the they want to have more control over it yeah, well, yeah it, it all it, the, it's there there's a bunch of different ways to get content on here i see and depending on what spec and what thing you're using i mean a lot of folks are just using straight up epub which is just straight up text and and while there's a little more advanced kind of file yeah. formats and you don't see it from the application level mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. yeah. um so i think we showed off Netflix last week, but uh, they have a pretty uh, cool app. I've been watching Gossip Girl, thanks to Ron. Can't go wrong. I've been, uh, you know, catching up. I just started the first season on Netflix, and uh, I hope this loads fast. There we go. Gossip Girl here. And the screen, I think, is really nice. Um, let's see here. Plug in the oh, audio. plug in yeah. the audio. Yeah. There we go. Here we go. Yes, everyone should hear Gossip Girl. Blair's my best friend, and you're her boyfriend, and she loves you. Really go out. Oh my God. Anyways, um, <laughs> that was that's it. Uh, <laughs> Chad caught me watching. <laughs> yeah, Chad's like, no, just keep playing that, please. Uh, okay, now um, what's what I want to show off here is the settings, the quick settings on here. Um, what's interesting is that this does come with 16 gigs, but. Um, the majority of the gigs uh, is for uh, Barnes & Noble content storage. As you can see here, 11 gigs versus, you know, the 1 gigs of other storage. But I have an SD card uh, installed, and I did put some um, music and uh, videos on the SD card that I could play in this My Media app. So, look, I've got an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia, nice. which is actually kind of off sync, oh, and I don't know if it's race, my, lose, lose, if it's the lose, app lose, or if it's just the file. Could be a codec of, issue. Oh, maybe. That's probably what it is. So, you know, it plays mm -hmm. fine. You can load, you know, I have an 8 gig card, or you can get up to 32 gigs. And then, you know, I just loaded a couple of photos that I could show in the gallery here. Very this is cool. my trip from uh, Spain. Uh, earlier this year, um, but and the browsing is okay. Um, it's it's actually pretty decent in some ways. I feel like it's it, oh, 
I cannot go into market.google.com. They will not allow they me block to do it. Really? Yeah, they blocked it. Wow. Um, I think you can sideload the, uh, the the Google Market app, but I haven't been able to do that. But I think the browser is actually kind of faster than uh, Amazon Silk. Uh, overall, having a really good experience. But what I do want to note is that uh, Charles uh, Shea uh, sent us a link on how to sideload the Amazon uh, store on here. Did it work? And I have done it. Cool. Let's see if I can actually show it. Now, the problem is once you sideload, they don't show the Amazon apps in uh, the Nook uh, OS. You have to just do kind of a search. So I'm going to do App Store. So there's the Amazon App Store. Look there you that. go. Cool. I downloaded a ton of apps. Uh, the one app that I do want to show, see now, see, this is the wonky part of it, is that I have to go. You have to launch it from. Yeah, yeah. I have to do it this way. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. No way, because really, you launcher. can't see it in your you can't see it in, in the your nook. app tray. Yeah. Uh, so here's Go Launcher X. I'm, I'm, there must be a way to keep this as my main launcher. I uh, I haven't figured that out yet. I just did it literally an hour before the yeah. show. Uh, so I have Go Launcher X running, and then you could see all the apps. Oh, cool. That I have, including Amazon MP3, Amazon Kindle, and okay. I'm able to play. Uh, from the cloud. Nice. Anybody want to hear some? This is a good song I like. And I'll play this. And it plays just fine. Hello. So you can. Yeah, okay. So I sideloaded that. And um, thanks to Charles, there is a, uh, a link here. There's a couple things because you don't get that screen that says settings and unknown sources. Right. You have to do it by down or going to a particular uh, website. And then it's sort of like a little backdoor way. Again, this link will show you how to do it. It's really, if I can do it, you can do it. And I did it in literally like 10 minutes. So easy. You have to go into comptonsoft.com slash test, download a link, then package install that, and then uh, go back and download the Amazon App Store and all this stuff. Or oh, actually hit unknown, click on unknown right. sources. It's a matter of getting to that unknown sources yes. toggle, which you can't get to th to through the normal exactly. uh, menu. Through the normal or, menu, the normal, and you have to do that. Menu. Yeah, you get this is a roundabout way. Again, we'll, we'll provide the link in our show notes. But mm, yeah, I did it, and it was super easy. Not ideal, no. but it works. Yeah. Not ideal, yeah. but it works, and and I'm sure. There'll be more ways to do other things and, you know, make it faster. So, you know, uh, the reason I stopped myself saying, oh, but if only I had the Amazon App Store on this device. Well, I got it now. Yeah. But the thing is a little bit roundabout. It's, wonky, yeah. it's a little wonky. It's, it's not exactly. It's, well, because um, it's not made for it. So right. that's, that's a tough thing. So now that you've moved on from your original Nook Color to the Nook Tablet, is it uh, as a Nook user, mm -hmm. you know, all things being equal, you were using your Nook Color happily you get the Nook tablet upgrade, are you better off? Is it? Is I, it like... Me personally, yes, because you can get Netflix and you don't have to hack it. You could just, you know, right. get some of these apps that are pretty basic to watch video. And then you can also, you know, um, download the SD card. Having yeah. all that space, absolutely. I think yeah. this is a really solid device. And like we were talking about, I don't know too many people that have bought this device, but there are a lot of people out there who have bought this device, and yeah. I think they'll be happy if they go ahead and upgrade. So exactly. I think this is a definite buy, especially for those people who are thinking maybe upgrade from the Nook Color. I say yes. Yeah. You know, it because you, you can, more, yeah. because you're going to be able to root this. So if yeah, you already right. rooted your new color, why don't you just go ahead and get more space and have it be faster? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it's a, a really, really decent device. Cool. And, you know, if you really don't care about the Amazon experience and you are okay with just hacking around, there you go. Yeah. And uh, one thing to note, there's some chatter in the chat room for people who are watching the video afterwards. Oh, oh there you go. sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. There's one thing I don't like is that the speaker is underneath so if I'm using, if I have the uh, Nook in this case, yep. it kind of muffles the sound a little oh, bit, which yeah. I don't and all, like. But you do have a volume rocker. I do a have a volume rocker. Switcher, like yeah. the Kindle. Which, yeah. yeah. But uh, some people are commenting on the on the video, the flickering of the Nook screen. Oh, yeah. That's a camera issue. It looks yeah. crisp and fine in real life. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, that's If you're ours. watching this, yeah. yeah. It just has to do with, you know, like put a camera in front of a monitor and the, with the refresh rates are off, you get that. Yeah. yeah but it is interesting that I don't know if I've ever noticed that refresh rate on any devices on any we've ever devices. had on the show sure. except yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. It's a good point. Uh, but, I mean, you don't it see looks, it in real life. You don't see it at all yeah. in real life. Can I look at it? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, but it looks, it's super, super crisp and it's like, and it looks great. So, yeah. Yeah. I, cool. you know, uh, I still think I, me personally, will just go ahead and get the fire. But um, 
there's nothing wrong with this device. It's actually even smoother. It's a little bit more buttery. Yeah. A little, that's little bit new, butterier. That's Again, because I think I think the <laughs> advantages in the hardware. I really mm -hmm. think this is a better tablet. It's a better, it is a better tablet. You know, like industrial. You know, like you know, industrial. Are but you looking a, for that Bradley Cooper article? No, mm -hmm. I was looking for the Great Caspi cast. Oh, the Great. Okay, I'll, I'll show you. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's my review of the new tablet. Not not a bad tablet, and kind of better yeah. in cool. in many ways. Awesome. I, I feel like that should be the 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 grade. Kind of better. Kind of better. <laughs> I could see that on the box. That's like kind of better. Kind of better than the All Kindle Fire. All about Android. It's a great album. There you go. Awesome. Well, I think right. you got the next email. Speaking oh, I fire. do. Okay, well, now let's move on. Okay, we've got an email here. Uh, this is from David who says he got his fire yesterday. The only problems are that, one, printing from the fire, and two, the URL from the Barnes & Noble app from GetJar. The second one, I'm not quite sure why you're having an issue because I, I have maybe, maybe they, um, Amazon found some way to block the Barnes & Noble uh, download from GetJar. Maybe I was able to get it um, in time because mine seems to work just fine, as you can see. I still have, I showed this off last time when I did the review that I, oh, and look, my Vanity Fair articles that I bought, um, or the, the Vanity Fair article but that I bought. Oh, look, it's not working. Hmm. Actually, it was working earlier. Oh, turn up the brightness. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's not working, but maybe yeah, they are doing like something. It's very unresponsive right now. Yeah. Wow. There you go. There you, there you go. got it. There you go. I know. Seriously. I don't know what's going on here. What's well, um, weird? I mean, it was working the, the other day. Yeah. But uh, wah, 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 maybe it won't work. And it worked when I did the... Uh, there, you there, you there we go. go. Yeah. It doesn't want to work. The Kindle's saying No. Don't. It's resisting. Don't. That's weird because Don't. the because the the Nook software is available in the App Store. I mean, it might not be in the Amazon. It's in the Android App Store, right? I'm sorry. I'm just thinking out loud. Ignore uh, me. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, anyways, um, so I'm not quite sure. Down. So maybe they maybe they stopped. Uh, just pulled it jarred. or blocked they it. They pulled yeah. it or, or found a way to block it. Yeah. So that's quite possible, David. Uh, in terms of printing, I did a call out on G+, and, um, and I looked at some forums. Apparently, there is no way to print yet, but the best way is to email yourself. There's some printers out there that have, you know, you email to the printer, and then it'll um, print out your document. Also, uh, from the forum, some people have said that this Kodak app here works to print out um, photos. I don't know if you can show that. Chad, um, I have to say that the Kodak app didn't recognize a few of the wireless printers that are here in the building. So I don't know. I, I see it says printer zero found, and we have a few that should be able to see via our network. And I haven't I've heard such. I mean, I've heard such spotty results from Wi-Fi printers just in general, not just tablets, mm -hmm. just people have getting them in general and them not working. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a super delicate thing to get. Yeah, mm, actually I don't see anything that. here. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to bring it up because I am interested in um, finding out if there's... Uh, now, I've also tried to uh, download printer apps here. I haven't sideloaded any, um, but I'm imagining that they're not going to work, but who knows? So let me know if you have any experience printing through your Kindle Fire, if you had any success stories, because I haven't read any on any of the forums that I trolled on today on Amazon, on various forums online. So uh, we want to help David out, and I'd like to print out stuff myself. That would be really nice. So at, at this point, no, not yet. But who knows? Maybe they will make an app available. There is an app in the Amazon App Store, just not for the fire. Cool. Oh, and I guess I'm the next one, too. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is really quick, though. Uh, this is from Jeff and Gray, who says, let me first say that it annoys me to tears when I see others share their pets enjoying things like laptops and TV shows, dot, 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 okay. But I couldn't help but share this picture of my cat, Gray, enjoying a recent episode of AAA. She was mesmerized by the show. Commence eye roll sequence. <laughs> there she well, is. The problem um, with this is that the cat's in front of the monitor. Not, the cat's not well, actually maybe, enjoying Well, maybe she the was show. posing and she yeah. was watching it before. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, just a special shout out from two of your biggest fans in flyover country. Keep up, the quote unquote, oh boy. we've said this before yep. on the show. Keep up the amazing work and love your show. Thank you, Jeff and Gray. Big ups to the flyover states. I wanted to show that because uh, Sarah always shows off the cats and the dogs that watch iPad today. Yeah. So, I don't care. Bring in your bring in your photos. I'm one of those eye rollers. I'm sorry. He just yeah, eye rolled, just, I, uh, as, as Jeff has said. I'm not a pet person. Myself. I'm sorry. I'm glad that you're kind of like <laughs> I'll show, show it if there's time. Yes, exactly. So, if there's time. So it's not like a habit. Is, uh... Not a habit. Not a habit. All right. All right. Let's get on to apps.
So as if someone at Google was trying to remind me of my know, right? awful performance in the Android arena last week. Uh, if you watched last week's episode, you might have saw me uh, showing off an app called Catalog. That's, uh, I forget who, my first look or some uh, mm -hmm. developer that does that. Well, uh, Google Catalogs for tablets recently rolled out in the U.S. only. So international people, uh, we apologize. But um, pretty interesting that they've rolled out uh, this Google Catalogs application that was previously available for iOS, right? Yes. Um, I've been waiting for this you, app to you come You jumped out. all over me when I came into the studio. I was like, can You're I like, see it? Do you have your tablet? Can I see it? <laughs> I forgot. my. I, I purposely didn't bring my tablet today, be, my Samsung tab, because I didn't need it for the yeah. show. Oh, and then this released. Too. Oh, yeah, they do have a... Oh, uh, everybody has a girl now. That's crazy. Uh, sorry. Okay, well, anyway. this is showing it off on the iPad, but it's basically the same. Yeah, and so um, we installed it, we took a look at it, and it's pretty neat. It's a pretty way... It's. It, Lord knows it blows the app I, I, I was showing in the arena out of the water. Yeah, it has like, a little bit more interactivity with it, Way more right? interactivity. You can, you know, like when um, a lot better identifying products, I'll give, it that, I'll give it that credit. And also you can do the thing where you can save the items you're looking at. Yeah, basically cool. there's little tag marks next to items um, that are available for purchase as they're showing on the video. And then you could hit the heart there and favorite it. And then it'll be saved for later viewing, or you could just go ahead to give you a, an option to buy on the website, and it goes directly to the website. Yeah, Chad, we got it up on the tablet. If you want to go to Eileen Shot, there you go. Wah. So um, yeah, so this is the when you launch. This is what you see, and you know it kind of gives you some featured catalogs right out of the gate. You can open Ooh. up another one. Oh, sorry. It's trying. There we go. Okay. There we go. Seeing that light and you can open up another one. You know, and you can browse and go through that way. Um, you can scroll through all the different catalogs here, which is pretty neat. Um, so we can go check out GIFs. And then um, in terms of what we were talking about in terms of the favorites, so you can favorite products that come from the catalogs. So, for example, we favorite a couple of shoes and pants. But then you can make these uh, cool little collages. And we can see that Eileen made a collage earlier of her <laughs> products that we were looking at earlier. I like that bracelet. So, <laughs> you know, and then you can you can adjust the images, you can crop it, you can resize it. It's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. So it's, it's Lord knows, like I said, it's way more fully featured than the catalog app I showed last week. And I wish they had launched it last week, because then I would have. Then you would have done this one. I wouldn't have lost as badly. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, moving on. Um, there's an app out in that's free in the Android Marketplace called the Ice Cream Sandwich Keyboard app. And it's if you want a sneak peek of uh, what uh, Ice Cream Sandwich has to offer for keyboards and or maybe you're just looking for an alternative keyboard, here's a free one in the Marketplace. I can show you it right now. Uh, just basically does what you've seen. It gives you suggestions uh, for words. Now, uh, I typed in hello, but you see the hello in the middle of the suggestions. It's kind of like um, Swift Key, mm -hmm. but when I hold this down where it has the three buttons, it gives you a ton of other suggestions. I don't know why hello would turn into belligerent or uh, shelling, but it gives you these <laughs> other options here for <laughs> other words. Um, I just wanted to say that it's available and uh, it's been out for a little bit and they just added uh, voice to text now and it does a, a pretty decent job but uh, check it out if you're looking for an alternative keyboard and you don't have ICS yet um, you could uh, try this one out so this is just a straight port from ice mm -hmm. cream sandwich pretty much lift, lift it out and yeah. uh, put up in the Android market oh. yep interesting New. that's cool see I ex I always see this type of stuff in um, in the XDA developers or in the forums mm -hmm. as downloadable APKs but then when I see it in the Android market I'm like huh uh, what how I Google know. feels about that? So yeah. It's a little more legitimate when it's just downloadable in the Google market. I know. Or, why yeah. doesn't, uh, or what yeah. about Google just offering it as, yeah. a, I know. Yeah, yeah. as a, a standalone download? Well, it, once everybody starts upgrading and getting your devices, you probably just delete it. But, you know, if you're, right. if you're curious, yeah. check right. it out. Cool. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, move on to an email here. Nick in Augusta. 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 Uh, Georgia says, after hearing about Folder Organizer from Jason on All About Android, I bought it in the Android market. Sometime later, Amazon offered it as a free app of the day. So I got it from there, too. My wife and I share an Amazon account so she can get all the free apps I've collected. Yes, I know. I know what that's like. Uh, now, every day, Amazon tells me I have an app to update. And if I do... Then the Android market tells me it has an update for Folder yep. Organizer. Then the whole thing starts again. Mm -hmm. I want to keep the Android market version since I've learned from AAA that those apps are more often the most up-to-date. Is there anything I can do to make Amazon forget about this app? Thanks. Love the show. Um, 
I don't think so, uh, which is kind of a, a strange thing because I've actually noticed the same thing. I, I posted in Google Plus today about it. Um, and actually, Phil Nickinson over uh, at Android Central ended up posting an article that um, that is kind of you know getting getting even more uh, discussion around this. He quoted my Google Plus thread. I was like, whoa, <laughs> nice. okay, interesting. Thanks, Phil. Nice little nice little uh, throw there. Um, but anyways, so it sounds like it's it's working in, in both directions, right? Somebody mm -hmm. installs something in the Android market and then they download it uh, through the Amazon uh, App Store. Um, and then they get that kind of conflicting error message saying, hey, you know, I want to update this, but it, this isn't my version. Can mm -hmm. I change it to my version? That's how it's been working for me. I have SwiftKey X and I have bought it through the Amazon or sorry, through the Google um, Android market. It came up as a free app on the Amazon market. So I got it because my wife and I share and an Amazon account. Yeah. And now every time I go to that update thing, it says, you know, it says we want to update SwiftKey X, even though the one I have installed is the Android market one. I've followed it through and it ends up saying application found. SwiftKey X was found on this device, but it is not associated with your mm -hmm. Amazon.com account. Do you want to remove and install the Amazon.com version? Which is kind of an interesting little yeah. way to... Well, it know? makes it even worse when you get the Kindle Fire. And now I've got three devices yeah. to... Because um, cause I... Downloading, you know, I'm starting from scratch on the Kindle Fire, and so I'm re-downloading stuff that I already have on my other devices, but just because I want to put it here. But now it's showing up on my updates mm -hmm. and crossing um, streams. Yeah, it's a yeah. Little, it's, yeah. it's kind yeah, of a exactly. pain actually. Um, yeah, but there, I mean, I guess long story short, there is no real solution for this that we know of right now, but it is absolutely a problem. Um, I, this only really kind of made itself apparent to me. A few weeks ago when Amazon updated, did the big kind of refresh mm -hmm. to their their uh, app store. So I don't know if that means that it's Amazon's issue or if it's Google's issue. I've had some people in the Google Plus thread were saying if the APKs are named the same thing, then they don't they the stores aren't going to know that it's one or the other until right. you kind of go through it. It's mm -hmm. just kind of a pain to. I, I always feel like there's there's a certain to allegiance to either Amazon, Google, Android Marketplace, or Getjar, and like and I know you guys kind of sample across all. I kind of generally stick to the Google Marketplace. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I have the Amazon App Store. I look at the free app of the day. I try to install it, but actually the 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 mass amount that I install is all through the Google Marketplace. Yeah. Um, and that's I think that's kind of subconsciously because I'm trying to play it safe. I think mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Um, but that's a problem. I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I can't imagine how it's keeping track of what the Amazon version is versus the Google version is mm -hmm. unless the APK is different or there's some subtle thing in there. Um, and this is, the ch this is the challenge to an open platform. I mean, that's the, yeah, anybody, it's, it's kind of the Wild West and anybody can throw anything on there and yeah. install it. Yeah. Um, that's really interesting, though. I mean, and there probably aren't that many scenarios where you're going to have the same app in yeah. multiple markets, but right. it just so happens that, People are you know, are running into that situation, um, so and it's not a totally a deal breaker necessarily. It's not like it breaks your phone. It's just annoying. I think you just got to be. Yeah. You just gotta think about it. Well, because mm -hmm. I'll see the update on my phone, and then I'll go to update it, and it says error. Right. And then you do it because it's like, not oh, the same. Oh, it's the Amazon yes. one, right. and I can't keep track of where I've downloaded the mm -hmm. app. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Anyways. Well, thankfully, it doesn't change anything right away if you hit OK. Like, like, I, yeah. like I said, I went through and it asks to confirm. So it's not going to, like, totally remove it, you know. I know. I used to it, think but... it would overwrite. And yeah. then I didn't want it to overwrite because I don't want the Amazon version because that one gets updated L less. Less frequently. Less right. frequently than the Android market. And mm -hmm. I, just, I just sit here. I'm like, oh, my God, where did I download it from? <laughs> I think I'm making it worse with the Kindle Fire, too, because I've downloaded apps that I already downloaded. Right. Well, and on your Kindle Fire, your focus, I mean, your focus is using Amazon to install exactly. apps on there because that's your primary way of doing mm -hmm. it. But that then ties into your phone where your yep. focus might not be with the Amazon. It does. Exactly. Uh, so I'm seeing market. two versions, but... Mm -hmm. I, hopefully on the phone it just says no you you know yeah don't, up, don't yeah, update that's here tough. that is but tough that's confusing hard to keep track all right well real quick here uh you've heard of netflix 
right? You've heard of it. You probably have it. And if you don't, you probably need to get it because it's pretty awesome. You can stream thousands of TV episodes and movies directly uh, to your devices, which saves you time, money, and hassle. You probably have a device that already does it. In fact, if you're watching this show, you probably do. Android devices can stream Netflix, as we so showed device earlier. That doesn't? I don't know. That's that, the well, thing. there's there's the Xbox 360, the PS3, Blackberry? Roku, Wii, uh, the Nintendo Wii, uh, you know, iOS devices. I got Netflix on my microwave. Interesting. No, 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 That's interesting. It's going to be when, someday when you soon. Mount your Android tablet on your exactly. microwave. <laughs> I see. I get it. <laughs> now, there's just a ton of devices that all stream uh, movies from Netflix. Um, and you don't actually have to be a gamer, you know, the, like the Roku, uh, Apple TV, all those kinds of devices. Uh, you can begin watching a movie or show on one device and then you can finish it up on another one. Sure. Uh, awesome. Whatever way you choose to access Netflix, you can watch as many movies and TV shows as you want, anytime you want. And you can cancel any time. So there is an offer. Try Netflix today for 30 days for free. And you can go to Netflix.com slash twit to do so. Be sure to use that URL when you sign up for your free trial. It's Netflix.com slash twit. And uh, you can try it for 30 days for free. See what you think of it. Stream, stream a bunch of movies 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and see what you think of it. And uh, then by the time you're passing out, you'll be like, okay, it's worth it. And uh, they'll pass out, and you'll wake up the next day and, and uh, plunk down some money. We thank Netflix <laughs> for the support of Twit, and we know you will enjoy the service. So check it out. I watched a lot of Netflix this weekend, so actually. I. I watched Gossip Girl, as I mentioned. I watched an episode of Bones. I uh, watched another show called Life Unexpected. And the movie that I watched was The Men Who Stare at Goats. Have you guys seen that? No, With you no, and McGregor no, and George Clooney? Yeah, I heard yeah. it wasn't that I didn't good. like it. Yeah, I heard it wasn't that good. It yeah. was kind of not good, actually. Yeah. It was... Uh, <laughs> I understood what they were trying to do with the story, but it didn't work. Yeah. I actually heard of it of that well before it came out and thought it sounded really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then all of the early reviews were so bad on it that I was just like, I wish I would have read the reviews. Yeah, and I didn't enough. until after the fact. And I saw like how low the stars were uh, yeah. out of 10. I thought, oh, no wonder. So I am... Right, about the way I feel. <laughs> you know, I am in agreement just, with other very, people, yeah. Very, normally a George Clooney movie is one I can trust. That's that's what I found. Yeah, yeah. normally. Yeah. Well, anybody following me on uh, Twitter over the weekend knew that I was watching a lot of 30-something on Netflix this oh, weekend. Oh, okay. Because um, I'm masochistic. That's it. <laughs> interesting. You've got, you've got strange, uh, inter not, not strange, interesting taste. It's really fascinating shows. to see. It's actually really fascinating because it's like, it's, like, it's like the real 80s. It's not like all new wave and like, yeah. oh, oh my God, 80s. It's like... 1987 straight up like normal 80s and it was it's a blast in the past but it's a great show it's a great show good writing all right we'll check that all out netflix.com slash twit uh and let's uh let's get our battle on let's get into the arena to enter one lives the android arena <laughs> Sorry. My co-host is a murderer. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're talking about. I am so afraid to be at this table now. <laughs> the the level of competition in the arena is starting to concern me. It's, yeah, it's getting a it's little intense, isn't it? It really is. It's, uh... We'll just go ahead and set this right here. <laughs> Ah. So everybody can see what the uh, consequences of this arena are. That was the are. thing I really, I couldn't find for Halloween with my costume, too. No, the sickle. As a I was sickle. saying, I was saying pre-show, I just wasn't going to come to the show anymore after last week's arena. I was so, really? I was so, really? So really? Really? Yeah. Well, partially because I didn't think I could uh, another performance like that. I don't think it's going to happen for a while. So. <laughs> Probably not. So how bad did I lose? Well, um, <laughs> as expected, the Charlie Brown Christmas <laughs> won resoundingly with 69% of the votes of 382 votes Do for Charlie Brown Christmas. Do we even ever get 382 votes I don't know. At that's that's in the upper, Total upper scale. Tech, where's Tech Ace when we need to know how many votes have we got? Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, second place was mine. A sprinkle with 19 percent that was 106 votes so i mean yeah. we got close to well a little over 500 total yeah. votes here which could be uh pushing <laughs> it uh and and tinus oh sorry catalog was third place with 11 percent 63 votes and tinus in the comments at uh the uh poll page says eileen made me cry Oh. Made me cry too. I know. I know. I made everybody yeah, cry. I know. Man. So, uh, Jason, you got Algeria and Chile and Iceland. It looks like uh, okay. I got most of the rest of the world. Uh, you got Poland yep. and Italy. That's my good. People. Um, my but people. But you know what, Jason? I have to tell you, Italy. Ron took Idaho. Really? Ah! Really? Ron took Idaho. If Freedom. you go to the United States, um, 
I think it was yeah. that thing I said about oh, Boise. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. Was Nobody Idaho. picked Idaho. Never mind. Oh, that's I, I, no, no. I think the, the, the reasoning is probably the same. I think it's that thing that I that I said a couple of episodes ago oh. about Boise. So now Idaho is just like not voting anymore. Yeah. Not like, voting you know anymore. They're They're fine. Yeah. But you they, got Arizona. You misunderstood me, Idaho. There you go. I you, love you, Idaho. I do. <laughs> I love you. I'd like to thank the United States for voting for my... For my app, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you and the uh, United States. Okay, so um, how are we going to do this? We're going to change we, up the uh, are we, order, are right? We doing the order? Are we doing yeah, the let's order? do it. So, uh, loser goes first. So the new order is the previous <laughs> week's losers go first, winner goes last. That's the new order. So, <laughs> my turn. Okay. Um, so coming into the arena this week, coming strong. Um, I found it's my my app is a triple threat. Um, as many of you know, we talk about Netflix a lot, and I talk about Google TV a lot. I like to watch a lot of TV. I like to watch a lot of movies. I'm a media, you know, kind of a, a absorber, and I'm constantly looking for interesting apps that let me watch um, my TV shows and movies and stuff like that on the go. Um, for those of you who are also into home theater and uh, the, these types of people who are into this stuff, you've probably heard of Plex. Uh, Plex is a boxy-like applica desktop application that allows you to, um, if you were running a, a, like a small Mac Mini or another PC as a media center, you could load up Plex and it would, it's an interface for you to um, uh, watch video from. You can load in your own TV shows. And uh, Chad, I got a link to their homepage in the, in the doc if you want to show that up. Yeah, so it's a, it's a cool little um, desktop application that allows you to, uh, like I said, watch TV and movies. They also have um, Roku-esque channels where so you can watch Revision 3, you can watch CNET. They don't have a Twit one, which they mm. probably should have had a Twit one there. Um, but what's really cool is that if you're like me and you actually have a lot of files of media stuff, it will go out and scrub the files and scrub the internet and give you the metadata so it loads up all the information, gives you uh, episode descriptions. Um, it also has a um, uh, interesting music and photo access, so it's pretty much this whole kind of desktop application. Now, how does that apply to this conversation? Well, they also have um, Android applications that run on the phone as well as the tablet, as well as they just rolled out one for Google TV. So it's a triple threat. It's three apps in one here in the arena. This is what I'm bringing to it. <laughs> Um, and the way the apps work is that they're they're interesting in that. <laughs> Did you see our lower third here uh, toggled for Android for Google TV for Android for Google I can't TV? Um, now, what's interesting is that um, so the Android ver the Android the phone app and the t and the phone app works on a tablet or a phone device. It works the same way, and I have it here. I'll show you guys how it works. Um, it that costs four ninety nine in the Android marketplace, mm -hmm. but the Google TV app that they just rolled out is only ninety nine cents. So if you got a Google TV for, uh, at home, it's a real steal to get for ninety nine cents to, to uh, be able to basically be able to watch your television content that's sitting on your uh, laptop or your desktop um, on your TV. Uh, the way it works is Plex installs something called the Plex Media Server, which basically serves out your um, your content. So when you're sitting at home on your Google TV, and unfortunately we can't show the experience, you pull up the Plex app, it finds your server. Gives you access to all your TV shows. Watch them on TV. That's how I watched all my TV this weekend. It was great. Worked excellent. Mm. Now, the edge on the Android version, on the phone and the tablet version, is that you can use Plex's central kind of web server access and much like, much like a sling box, be able to watch your TV shows from wherever you are. All you got to do is pull up the app, connects to Plex, you log in, it finds your server, you can stream it. It's that simple. Mm. Totally that simple. So here, I'll pull it up uh, on the tablet. Here we go. So, so what I've got right here, my laptop behind us is running the Plex Media Server. And if I hit that, it will load and it's going to connect and find, oh, and yeah, audio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's looking for my server right now. It's thinking for those of there you. There you go. So there now I go. found it. And so now you can see here that it's got the channels. So I've got Revision 3. I've got CNET logged in. It can also access my iTunes. Mm. But what I really like it for is the TV shows. So I'm going to hit TV shows. And it gives you a whole bunch of things to choose from. All shows or unwatched shows or search by rating or letter or by genre. I'm just going to go for all shows. And here, these are all the TV shows that I have on my laptop. Oh. And so I can go here and I can say, okay, Misfits is a great UK show. And you can see it's pulled in. If I go back, it's pulled in all I had was the media file that I got. Oh, wow. And it released. populates all the it images. Good. The cover yeah. image, the description, the title, um, oh, you know, like all that. album artwork loads up automatically. And you can play it back. Oh, th wait, that file is bad. I'm sorry. I forgot about that one. I should be doing Boardwalk Empire. And now it remembers where you watched it. 
So I can play from the beginning or resume, so I'll just do play from beginning. Charges of crookedness relating to last year's World mm -hmm. Series. Uh, so it's streaming from your it's streaming laptop from here? Your laptop here. Ago, oh, right it's streaming now. Right now, it's streaming via Wi Fi because I'm connected to via Wi Fi, but you can use the Plex web server, web services, and you can stream via 4G or 3G Why if you have you that, that, that access. Mm. Mm. Um, what's great is that Plex does a um, on the fly encoding, media encoding. Mm -hmm. So as it's serving, um, so as it's serving the uh, the file, it's uh, encoding it for whatever device you're on. So that's it on the tablet, and I'll pull it up onto the phone here, and you can see it on the phone as well. There we go. So now, if I go right here, and you see it's essentially the exact same experience. Mm -hmm. on the phone versus the tablet. Um, it's one of those apps that are designed, there was no, none of the expansion, you know, like the, the tablet kind of expanded type thing. It mm -hmm. just worked natively, like they designed it really well, so it just mm -hmm. expands for whatever thing you're using. Um, so you see here on the phone, it's a little bit more compact, it's a little more, a little tighter, you know, the various channels and things like that. But I can go to my TV shows and go, it's all the same data coming through here, so. And go check out The Walking Dead, which just anybody watched it recently. Just finished up. Spoiler alert! Yeah. Careful. But spoiler. Alert. Show the end. And so now it's serving it straight from my uh, from my laptop. Wow. Nice. So, yeah. So Plex, really really cool. Um, like I said, it's a triple threat: phone, tablet, Google TV. Um, if you're a home media enthusiast like I am, it's worth uh, checking out, especially if you want to um, be able to watch your shows on the go. If you travel a lot, you don't want to have to buy a sling box, don't have to buy the hardware associated mm -hmm. with the sling box, just five bucks for the, for the applications and you're all set. That's awesome. I mean, I have a media server on my Mac at home for um, going out to my PS3. So it's kind of a similar thing. Like if you have media files or pictures or whatever on your computer, it just kind of streams it over. And yeah. Now it's comes, yeah. important to note a disclaimer that that it's for all media that you own that you got through legitimate, uh, you know, yes. locations and things like that. So just to get that disclaimer out there. So, yes, don't advocate piracy. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, Plex, and there are two different links to go for that, right? Uh, one for Android and one for Google TV. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And Google TV is ninety nine cents. The and the Android device is four ninety nine. Awesome. So, yeah. All right, cool. Well, um, since I came in second place, I'm going to go ahead and go next. Eileen, you can wait. I will since wait. You won. Uh, so the <laughs> app that I'm doing, I have, I actually, this was one of those uh, arenas where I was like, God, you know, I had a few ideas. I wasn't super sold on any of them. Mm -hmm. And then actually, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do an arena on an app that I discovered this morning. Oh, wow. uh, because I've done that because I, I seriously, I saw it. And I knew immediately. I was like, okay, uh, this the video for it was pretty pretty sweet. Right. And I knew it was the kind of thing that I could waste Do a lot it. of time. It's called Node Beat. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm suddenly breaking up. Node Beat. N-O-D-E-B-E-A-T. It's a music creation app. And it works on a phone, but it also works uh, amazingly well on a tablet. I almost think it's better on a tablet than it is on a phone. Essentially, you have kind of these different uh, items up at the top that you can play around with. So these with pluses, these are kind of generators. They don't do anything in and of themselves. They only start making sound when you bring other elements close to them. And they're following a certain tempo. So if I bring this closer to it, it'll happen you know, quicker. If I bring it too far out, it won't be connected at all. Um, I'll just pull a few things down here, so. And let's see here, we'll pull that down. Oh man, I could see you messing around with this for a long time, Jason. And so you can start to bring or bring these elements out here and kind of get um, different, you know, basically you're positioning these things closer or further away from the generators. You can see that they're kind of drifting around, right? These are, there are settings in here that you can actually um, determine whether there's gravity. So gravity would push everything down um, at a certain speed. Generator movement, which kind of moves them roughly around the areas that they are and note movement. Uh, you can also kind of slow down the speed so they move very slowly. And the proximity is kind of how far out the nodes can be connected to the generator. So I've got them connected really far out here.
And then you can kind of go into audio system here. You can make the echo really long or change the, uh, the waveform. Right now it's a sine wave. And you know, you can pitch shift it down, pitch shift it up. You've got your ADR, um, ADR controls attack. So if you want it to be a slow attack at the beginning, or you want it to hit at the beginning, maybe easier to hear that with the sine wave. Slide that release up and it ends up being a little bit longer. It's just a really cool kind of like easy way to create some interesting sounding music. Uh, obviously, it's pretty electronic based, right? Um, and there, the one thing I would really like to see is maybe a little bit more control in here. I think this is a great first effort. It's a it's a dollar ninety nine, so it's not that much to kind of get started playing uh, playing music with it. You can actually tap that to kind of bypass it for a second. <laughs> you can just kind of play with it and see what you come up with. Anyways, um, so <laughs> I don't know. I get lost in it because there are so many things that you can do with this. Uh, rhythm, uh, you can change the tempo, of course, and change the uh, the rhythm structure there. And, um, oh, this is this is also a lot of fun. So when you're done and you're sick of this thing, you shake it and it goes away. Oh, cool. oh <laughs> yay. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Um, so, you know, it, it's $1.99, and it's one, one of those apps that you'll spend a little bit of, you know, I mean, $1.99 is nothing, right? But you can just kind of get lost in it. You can record it to an audio file. So nice. if you want to do that. Um, and then share it out to everybody. What was I weird. I made this node beat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, you can do, you can just kind of go with it live. And, you know, it, it, what I'm what I'm hoping to see eventually, I'm hoping that the developer has more ideas for this because one of the things that I've noticed is that there, that echo function that you can apply applies to everything. And I would love to have like, a section of the app that you don't apply the echo to. And what I mean by that is like sometimes I want my percussion, like my bass drum, I want that to just hit without an echo because an echo kind of makes it noisy in combination with everything. Maybe have like the musical nodes have the echo and have a little section of the screen that doesn't have echo so you can do a little bit, you know, a little bit more with it and get really creative. I mean, I see a lot of iPad apps these days that are, you know, very music making focused mm -hmm. and I don't see as much of them on the Andro on, on Android, uh, but I, I think this is a, an awesome effort and I hope to see more of this stuff and if I do, I will absolutely highlight them on the show because this stuff really kind of gets my, uh, my blood flowing. I love it. So that is uh, Node Beat. It's $1.99 in the Android market. Check it out. Awesome. Cool. I like that. I like that. I like yeah, that. it's a lot of fun. I like how we all have our little, little like, app niches. Kind of niches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, anything music, I, you know, and, like. What's mine? You know, retro? No, yours is. Yeah, I'm retro, all over the place. I guess retro at this point. Yeah. Until another pattern emerges. <laughs> <laughs> I go through phases. Photo. I think photos. Yeah, yeah. photo. I do, I do a lot of photo music, stuff. Music, photo, on TV, and mm -hmm. movie. Kind totally, of totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Well, I don't have a photo app this week. Shocking. Uh, I very I shocking. I haven't done a photo app in a <laughs> long a time, while, yeah. actually. I almost one, did. I've been using that one that you did the last one. Pixel Aromatic. Oh, I love, I love it. that yeah, app. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. Uh, and I don't even think that was in the arena. I think I just highlighted that I as an app. too. So it's eligible to be in the arena then. I, I guess it is. You could take it, <laughs> but I get some credit. I get 25% of that uh, <laughs> credit. No, um, uh, I, I also was um, kind of wavering again. I think I wavered last week on what app I wanted to uh, feature, and I had something on the docket, and uh, I re when I really thought about it, I'm like, you know, although I use it all the time, there's something about it I'm just not ready to just give it my full support. So uh, I looked at my phone today and I thought, God, what, what app do I use all the time? Because I want to make sure it's something that I actually use all the time. And you know what I do use? It is called Square Card Case. It's free from Square. You've probably heard of Square. They're kind of a competitor yeah. to, you know, Google Wallet and, you know, NFC. We had Square on the yeah. show. And we talked Square's to Eric great. from Square uh, at uh, Android Open, and I had never used Square yet. I actually have the little dongle. I don't have it on me, unfortunately. Um, but you don't necessarily need it to use 
um, square. I saw an interesting, uh, I was at the gym and CNN had a thing with the head of the Salvation Army at how they're using oh. square now on street corners to get donations this holiday yep. season. So there you go. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, um, a lot of the merchants around here are using Square, and you can use this app called Square Card Case, again, which is free. Um, and I wanted to show you a, a little demonstration. I used it at a uh, coffee house that I love that just opened out here in Petaluma called Acre. I've been raving about it. It's kind of a hipster vibe uh, coffee house, whatever. But um, essentially, I'll show you now how I used uh, the app to purchase some coffee. So here I am and launching the app. What I do here is I've already enabled Acre, so I uh, hit click use tab, or uh, have a tab that I opened, uh, and then now it's ready. All I need to do is walk into the coffee house and say my name. I don't need to bring my wallet or anything. In fact, I did not bring my wallet to the coffee house. So I just put in my Daring. order. I'm talking to the woman at the counter, and I'm oh, ordering an so Americano. Cool. And uh, uh, and and what they see on the iPad on their end, they have an iPad as their register, is my face so that they know it's me. Yeah. And then they authorize, approve. And then on my end, I see, yes, I bought an Americano and a loose leaf tea. It's charged to my debit account, which I've preloaded into the app. And I can walk away with my Americano and my uh, green leaf tea without having to ever pull out my wallet, which is awesome because you've seen my George Costanza wallet, right? You've seen how heavy that is. It's as easy as that. And let me open up card case really quickly here, uh, Chad, because there is an explore places tab. So you can find out to see if there are other locations uh, near you. Oh, do I not have GPS uh, enabled on my phone? Oh, I turned it off. Whoops. Um, that is that is also make sure you have GPS enabled on your phone and that it's working properly because I did go to Acre one time with GPS enabled and it wasn't able to uh, recognize that I had my tab uh, available and um, we weren't so able to figure GPS is it required. Out. GPS is required. Okay. So now I'm searching for nearby merchants and there's not too many out here in Petaluma. There's a Pilates place that you could open a tab with. Again, you can just pay without using any cash, any credit cards. You basically what I've done here, you don't see. I'm not going to show you, but you just preload either a credit card or a debit card into, you create a Square account, um, and then, uh, you know, you, you log in, and then uh, you launch the app, and then you could see other places. Now, a lot of San Francisco places are kind of showing up, or it did up here. The Rib Whip, which is 35 miles away, Ebbets, good to go, I guess, 35, 33 miles away. But there are a lot of places that are starting to use this now. I like it because you don't have to swipe your phone. You don't have to touch anybody. You don't have to do anything. You just launch the app. You, you know, people. I don't you, want to touch coffee? Well, no, because of when you do exchange of, of yeah, money no, I mean, and stuff like yeah. that, no, it's that, very that's, easy this, and That's simple. my dream. I mean, I think I, I, you've heard me complain, like coming back from the gym when I just have my phone on me and I have a wallet mm -hmm. and I really want a Snapple. And like that's why I was moaning over Google Wallet only being uh, um, through Sprint because yeah. I want it. I want this, you know, either NFC-based payment or something like through, through using Square. It's pretty And exciting. you can download this right now. I just did. There you go. Yeah. And then, oh, let me show this really quick, too, once I uh, chat on the app. So there's also Square. Uh, you could take payments. if you. This flips the app. And so if I have that little white dongle that you've seen mm -hmm. uh, in places before, I can go ahead and put it and attach it to my phone. And then I could, if you owe me money, um, uh, Ron, I can just swipe the credit card. And then you can just give me cool. uh, the amount that you owe me. And then it'll go into my um, account. You don't even need the dongle. Oh, I guess you don't even need the dongle? Yeah, you just type in their phone. Their oh, number, okay, great. Card number. So there you go. That is Square Card Case, and it is so handy. It's the future. I really feel like we all have different apps that kind of demonstrate sort of the future and where everything is going um, technology-wise. Payments, how to yeah. view um, uh, media, and how to create. I love all of that. I think we've kind of, like, spread out in, in many yeah. different ways this week. Just to show, so no, no matter what you choose, whatever app you choose, I think we've all kind of shown something that's awesome. That's why you have these devices and why you, why you buy these And things. I love that as you're talking about it, I can go to the Android Marketplace, click install on my phone, and then have it installed. Yes. And, and like... And you've already bought a I've, coffee. I've, I've already, yeah, no, exactly. I've got <laughs> you're like, oh, well, oh, we got to end the show because I got to <laughs> yeah, pick no, it up. But, um, no, I mean, how cool. I mean, like, it's already got my... It, I yeah. just logged in through my Square account and it's got all my stuff. Yep. Yeah. That's really cool. Nice. So, I love it. Very yeah, cool. it's a good UI, too. I mean, yeah. that that was what we saw. Yeah. Uh, Eric was doing yeah. beautiful apps. That was that's his um, his his app or and, his his talk at Android Open. Yeah, right. and that's the, and that's the thing is that like a lot of people say that Android you know suffers on the design side, and it, and Square is an example of a of a company of a developer that can make 
as pretty apps as iOS, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this is a very, very pretty app. I'm impressed. So it's not as good as being able to watch Boardwalk Empire anywhere, but eh, maybe not. Yeah. It's, not as, it's not as good as, you know, you know creating I, music in a very creative way. The first well, couple times is. that I used um, this app, I did bring my wallet just in case it didn't work <laughs> yeah. because I was a little nervous. I'm of like, course. well, what if it doesn't work? And of course, I'm it would all suck the way to get there, there and then have to go all the way back. But and, I didn't yeah. even think twice today when I went ahead and bought and we went out to shoot that little segment. I, I just, I walked so, out. Shooting. Right? <laughs> I know, right? Can you? Well, but you still something could have gone awkward. wrong, I would, right? I would have definitely won in the arena if that did. <laughs> Although I saw a little bit of inconsistency in your video. You did. You, you bought two coffees, and then when you and walk out of the store, you have one. a phone in one hand and a coffee in the other. I didn't show the part where I actually gave it to Chad, and he was holding his coffee while he was still, you know, uh, uh, Shooting he's me, sipping the coffee the while yeah. he's shooting with a yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah. He's, he's, he's talented. Multi, multi -talented that guy. You know, offering the camera while <laughs> drinking coffee. Oh, no. <laughs> Red hair. I'm abusing Chad. <laughs> All right, so people in the chat room are saying this is a hard one to vote for. Oh, good. I like that, that means okay. that we're bringing our A game. We're yeah. all bringing something pretty pretty good to the table. Um, That's why we're so here. why don't you go and vote? Bit.ly slash 37 AAA poll. Bit.ly slash 37 AAA poll. Thank you. And you know, this is episode 36. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but just to let you know, it's episode 36, but the, the, the link. Poll no, is no, I did that. I did that to, uh, to you know, you to off, send right? off the people that were guessing the URLs. <laughs> it's it's still bit.ly slash 37 AAA poll. I meant to do that. I realize it's episode 36. <laughs> Whatever. I love watching it real time. <laughs> uh, so I'm it's not going to change it. So go time. there and check it. Uh, and then next week, it'll be 38, even though it won't actually be 38. Uh, and we'll speaking flex. of next week, we'll do the 99-cent deal. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a great topic. And yeah, I'm sorry that you idea. won't be here You're for welcome, it. You're welcome, you guys. Thank you for the great <laughs> idea. We'll revisit it the following week with the $1.99 deal. Yes, the $1.99. We'll, we'll up it every day. I'm every really time. looking forward to the $15 <laughs> app uh, we'll uh, have to get leo's okay for that yeah i know it's really early but the early returns are in and i'm leading you so. are <laughs> leading you are leading very we'll good see. we'll see about that i think node beat has legs that's all i'm saying <laughs> Ooh, fighting words yeah um so that is it i think we've reached the end and we've successfully avoided decapitating anybody <laughs> with this sickle I think that's important. Yeah, that I'm so is afraid important. when that's he picks key. that up, I'm like, okay, don't do anything. Yeah. Don't say anything. Whoops. Stuff got stuff got real really quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, my sorry God. About that. Yeah, yeah. Now there's weapons in the real yeah. weapons I, in the I arena. I just like you guys. I don't want to compete. Why can't we just all get along? Why can't it be like oh, But the, you're competing. Why can't it be like You the, are competing. You're like, no, I'm going to win. Did you see? Plex I, is ahead. I suggest that we change the arena to the Android share circle. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever's holding the little green Android, they get to talk and talk about their app. And then we Afterwards. Are oh, you, this, is this okay. a part, this sounds like the new girl when she gave the <laughs> yeah, stick. This, and if anybody watches the new girl with Zoe Deschanel, she gives the, the, the feeling the, stick. The feeling whatever. stick and, and then somebody broke the sticks. <laughs> then she had a small one back up in her Oh, it's a good show. Yeah, a feeling. You can watch wow, a show you, on Flex. You guys watch a lot of TV that I just <laughs> yeah, have no idea about. We really about. do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> Got to say. All right, well, that's it for this week. Ron, go ahead and plug. Yes, plug away. You can find me, everything you need to know about me on my about.me slash ronxo, which you can also get if you're watching the video in the lower third right there. Um, it's a new little adjustment to our lower thirds. So you can find me there on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, um, Foursquare, I think. All the places that are on there that I'm out there, you can follow me on. Um, and as always, you can find me on ifanboy.com, which is a website dedicated to comics, and our parent company, Gra parent company Graphically, uh, which makes graphic novel apps for Android and iOS and all that fun stuff. So check it all out. And yeah. happy holidays. Happy holidays. Oh, I said happy holidays. Yeah, it's a little early, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah. In the, we're in the season. It's that now oh, you're totally allowed in. to listen I'm to Christmas totally, music. I finally, now. the day after Thanksgiving, I pulled up the, I, I tweeted it out. I, I pulled up uh, the she, the new She and Him's because Zoe just, you know, really good uh, She and Christmas Him record album. on my Google Google Music app, on my Google TV. It was like, yeah. <laughs> Drink. It was wonderful. So. <laughs> Drink. Uh, okay, and I'm Eileen TV on Twitter and about.me slash Eileen Rose. Leave it at that. You can find me there yeah. everywhere. It's got everything you need mm -hmm. there. I'm about.me slash Jason Howell. You can find me on Twitter at Reagan01. And that is it for this week. We are done. Next week, we will not have Eileen with us. It's unfortunate. But we oh. will have Nicole Lee. 
Exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. She started this week uh, with Twit, and we're super stoked. So she's going to be on the show next week with I'll us. I'll be in France, sipping, Croissants. eating croissants. It's, it's hard. Do you guys want anything? It's what hard you guys to feel bad France? for you, really. It's, I know, uh, you, know you guys don't yeah, feel bad for me yeah. at all. I'll bring something yeah. back. What do you guys want, a piece of cheese? What I want? want an Android phone that you can only get in France. Okay. So spend there's, your entire trip there's looking. There's so many surrender jokes hitting my head that I just surrender? I don't, don't want to say. Because <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody in France because I want to win France in the, in the <laughs> fall. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't offend them France if you want to win. France will vote for me, right? Uh, we'll see what you come back with. Uh, <laughs> send us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. You can hit us up on email. Send us a video mail if you prefer, aaa at twit.tv. Uh, hit the show up on Twitter. That's at Android Show. Show notes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa. And finally, you can catch us live every Monday uh, right around 5 p.m. Pacific at live.twit.tv. That's it. Let's hope that I hear something about the Galaxy Nexus tomorrow because I'm sick yes. of waiting. Lord knows. We'll see. All right. See you guys later. <laughs> so pimping out your app. And nobody Somebody really wants to win.